Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Mastermind Presence panel. This is our first of many, hopefully. This one we're titling Leading Through a Pandemic. I'm Scott White. I am the 2022 President-Elect for Orange County Realtors. With me today is our 2020 President, Danielle Corliss, our 2021 President, Lori Namazi, and our 2022 President, Adam Rodell. We're going to be asking them some fun questions. Hopefully you guys will get a little bit out of this about leading through a pandemic. So I'm going to open this up right away. We're going to just jump in and start asking them some questions. What I'm going to do here is first start off with a series of questions that are going to be for the entire group. So you guys can all pick what order you want to go in, whether it's chronological of your, your leadership or just jumping in. So the first question I'm going to ask each one of you is... We're going to start with what led you all here? What was your journey to leadership and what made you decide to run for president of our association? Danielle, why don't you start us off? Sure. Um, gosh, my leadership journey started years and years and years ago. I think probably when I was in preschool, um, I, I, I have been told. Um, but let's fast forward a little bit to even... Um, High school. I was junior class president. I was student body uh, vice president. I was a yearbook editor. I, in college, I was part of the student community, um, which is their student leadership. Um, all of these were elected positions. I, I, I just, um, I love. Oh, another thing. Um, my degree from USC is in communication. So you know that's um, leadership is communication. And so it just kind of all, all has been part of my life journey to be in leadership. I love it. And what made me decide to run for president of the association? It was getting involved at a, several, several years ago as a committee member and then a committee chair. And then I got elected to the board of directors and then um, got elected to um, be president. So just, I think the word journey is it. Good. And for me, hello, everybody. So glad so many people are joining us today. So I have always belonged to some type of larger organization. So like Danielle started at a very young age. I was in Girl Scouts from first grade through eighth grade and then in high school in the marching band and tall flags. And in both of those organizations, I just naturally found myself demonstrating leadership skills where people would say, hey, we want you to be in charge of this and we want you to be in charge of that and take care of this. Um, ultimately, throughout my career, I was in a variety of management roles and attended tons of leadership training. Um, I always felt like if I could educate myself further, I'd have more tools in my toolbox. And so that just naturally gave me the opportunities that I was faced with. Um, I have a master's degree in organizational leadership. And for 15 years, I was an executive at First Team Real Estate. Actually, for about nine of those 15 years that I was there, I was a corporate executive there, um, culminating in being the, the designated realtor, the corporate broker for over 1,800 agents. Um, so I too started at the association, just serving on committees, you know, going to trainings and then serving on committees and, um, and, and then getting onto the board. Um, I'll explain that in a, in a different question, but um, I decided to run for president because many of my peers said, why aren't you running for president? We want you to run for president. So I did. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you for being with us. And it's great to be here with uh, such great uh, leaders uh, like Danielle and Lori. Um, you know, Danielle actually brings up a memory. I, I would never have brought this up, but I was the fifth grade uh, class president. Uh, it was my first year living in California. I was from Nebraska, and I showed up on the scene here in California, and I had, I think, the longest hair in uh, my fifth grade <laughs> class. There were four different four different rooms, and uh, I think everybody thought, you know, I was really cool or something. And they said, uh, "Hey, let's make this guy the president." So, yeah, that was my introduction to California. But um, other than that, honestly, I was brought forward into this process by a few uh, uh, a few uh, realtors who are, are part of this system, and I'll, I'll mention them in a bit. But uh, you know, my 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 pathway here started with local government relations. Uh, getting involved 
uh, with the association and not just the, uh, the daily grind of being a real estate agent, which I still am and I, I still will always be, but uh, that, that's kind of where this path started. I will admit that when I first had an opportunity or probably should have run for president, um, I honestly didn't feel I was ready to make the commitment. Uh, this is definitely a commitment that uh, each one of these presidents has made to the association. And, you know, I, I felt like my time, um, I just couldn't make the commitment. And, uh, you know, now I think I'm, I'm, I'm capable to make the commitment. I think I've got everything, all those plates are spinning properly. And uh, I think it was time to, to run this time. That's it. Thank you all three of you. I'm gonna ask another question. It's gonna be a two part question, if I may. What would you say to someone considering volunteer leadership? And if they lack leadership experience, what would be the first step? So I'll start with that one. Um, you know, I, I do not believe that leadership is a club. A lot of people say, you know, when did you join leadership? It's not a club. If you wanna be involved, get involved. And if you have leadership skills, people will see them and they'll ask you to be more involved. And so don't be afraid to just show up and learn and be part of the group. It's really important to belong to this organization, not just pay your dues. And so if you have any interest in knowing what you could contribute to the association, just get involved, just show up and attend and, and we'll reach out and then feel free to ask us any questions. If you do want to get further involved and you're just not sure how to get started, you know, any one of us and, and many others out there will be happy to, to share their, their information with you. You know, I feel like anybody that's on this call today is definitely a step ahead of where I was. Um, before I had at any concept of, of this leadership or participating at the association at a higher level or, or any level, quite honestly. So again, that first step for me into the local government relations meeting, that was my first step, but we do have so many great committees here that uh, folks can, can step into, uh, you know, submit your application, become a part of this process. And I, I think uh, anybody that's on this call today would really appreciate where they can go once they take that very first step. Yeah, there isn't a lot I can add to what Lori and Adam have said. Um, they're, they're right. Uh, figure out where your interests are. We've got so many wonderful committees. You know, if you're interested in local politics, get involved in local government relations. You're interested in education, then get in, involved in the education um, committee. But I would also say approach everything with curiosity. Ask questions, learn from others, be humble. Listen, you're gonna hear me talk a lot about listening um, throughout the, the afternoon today, but um, like Lori said, talk with the current leaders. We, we want more people involved. We want to help develop your roles, your, your leadership skills. Um, so, you know, maybe just take that first step and, and let someone know that you might be a little bit interested. Um, don't worry, you don't have to be president, but um, serve on a committee. I mean, you, you will enjoy doing that and learning more about the association. If I may add on to this too, I think those are great answers. I think that we need to be reminded that everyone or most everyone has some sort of passion for something in our industry, whether it's been mentioned already, whether it's government or just making the, the whole industry a better place for each one of us to work, that's how we're gonna affect this is through being on these committees and these, in this association and taking leadership roles here. So thank you each of you for stepping up. I'm gonna jump us into the next question, if I may. Who tapped you on the shoulder to serve at OC Realtors and why did you say yes? I'll go ahead and start with this one. So honestly, I can, I can go all the way back to three individuals that have had key roles in my involvement with the association. First one was Terry Miles um, and she, she was the one that um, when Bill Cup a, a local realtor here in the north uh, area uh, had asked me to be vice chair of LGR. I had no idea what LGR was, stood for, uh, but Terry Miles was in that room. And I looked at Terry as, uh, as an agent and a veteran that I totally respected uh, when I was a little bit newer in my career. And Terry goes, Adam, you can do this. You know? And so I did it. Um, and uh, Barbara Dalglaze, another person that was super instrumental 
Um, you know, I was in Sacramento for the first time and uh, that whole experience of, of going to Sacramento with uh, fellow realtors and, and staff and, and being a part of the kind of the political landscape for the first time, it was overwhelming, but it was such a rush. And uh, I remember going out to dinner and there was a bunch of us, we were all together and, you know, Barbara was kind of a fast rising star and had been a past president here at OCR. And, um, you know, she looked at me and she says, you know, Adam, you, you got to get a little bit more involved in this. And that's kind of where the involvement with the political uh, action and elections committees came in at PAC. Um, and then lastly, Rita, <laughs> you know, Rita, I was in the parking lot and she said, you got to run for board of directors. And, uh, you know, when Rita says something, you just do it. There's no, I don't know what it is about that lady. So uh, I don't know if she's on this call or not, but Rita, um, thank you for that little nudge. I think for me, it had a lot to do with staff. Um, I got tapped by a couple of staff members um, almost before I even understood what staff even did. And that was um, kind of cool, you know, just um, kind of thinking, who, who am I? And, and why is this person asking me to be involved? Um, but I do have to give a little bit of a shout out to Scott White on this call. Um, I was for, this isn't the question, but um, when I was sort of halfway, not fully thinking about uh, running for, it, you run for president elect and then you ascend to president the following year. Um, when I was a little bit just toying with the idea, I actually got a, um, an email from Scott when I was uh, on a cruise um, uh, at the Dalmatian coast uh, across from Italy. And I thought, why is Scott writing me this email? And so it's funny, here I am, you know, in my cabin barely getting any cell reception at all. And I was able to get through this email of, of Scott saying, hey, this is something you really um, would be good at and you need to consider it. And here's why the timing is right. So for me, it was staff, it was my, my peers who, who saw something in me. And, um, and I'm grateful because it's been a really amazing journey the last several years. Well, for me, uh, it was a little bit different. I was attending classes at OCR and getting involved in that level, but not in any leadership role because I had my fill at, at my corporate job. And um, by chance, First Team has a dedicated um, seat on the board of the directors, on the board of directors that year based on the size of the company. Um, there are four top large brokerage seats on the board of directors and we happen to have earned a seat that year um, for several years and so Bill Plotos was the designated director for the company and you're allowed to serve three sorry you're allowed to serve two three-year terms and so he had he was finishing up his year six and was terming out and basically said hey you need to go fill this spot and so I said, okay. And he said, it's just for a year. Don't worry about it just for a year. And then I'll take it back. Well, after my first meeting, I said, you're not getting it back. And um, he did not get it back. So um, I filled that role while I remained at the company. And so, um, and I would say second to that was Vivian Vanderwerd. If you remember her from grievance committee and pro standards, she was on staff and she has since retired. But, you know, when I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it, or like Adam said, I don't know if I if I was able to do it, if I was capable of doing it, she said, it was made for you, go ahead and do it. So those two were, were the main ones. Some great answers. Thank you for sharing a little bit of the, the personal side of this whole story too. I wanna to ask Daniel a couple, couple of questions here um, that are right for you, Daniel. Um, you just started your presidency last year when COVID-19 turned everything upside down. How did you manage to the transition to a virtual environment for your leadership? Yeah, that's a that's a big question, actually. Um, you know, COVID-19 was unexpected for all of us, but it didn't catch us fully off guard. It didn't catch our association fully off guard. Um, we had a crisis, but we knew we could get through it. We had to be open to doing things differently, open to change. We had to be quick thinkers. So a great example of managing the transition to a virtual environment, um, the best example I can think of was the annual meeting uh, that year. Our annual meeting was supposed to be at the end of March. And as all of you know, COVID 
really turned everything upside down the middle of March. So um, that's why this is such a good example. So the, the, the annual meeting had already been planned. Um, it was gonna be held at UCI. We already had over 400 RSVPs, which was an amazing number for an annual meeting. Um, and then the order prohibiting these mass assemblies was issued and we had to do a quick, quick pivot. We thought about having it at the Laguna Hills office, which would only hold about 150 people. We could live stream it to the Fountain Valley office to allow a few more to attend, but all of these ideas and many more actually got got scraped, um, including moving the meeting to later in the year, which actually was, was um, something that I was in full support of, which now we know that would have been a horrible idea uh, since even to this day, we're still dealing with COVID. So ultimately it was decided to hold the meeting 100% remotely, virtually with each of us speakers doing our portion from our own homes. And this was the first time ever. Now, just so you know, I'm not, a dumb person, but technology just isn't exactly my strength. Um, I've gotten a lot better at it <laughs> um, because we had to go virtual. But at that time, you know, a year or gosh, almost now, almost two years ago, um, I, this just was not my strength. So the meeting to go virtual, the decision to go virtual was made on a Friday. The annual meeting was to be 10 a.m. on Monday. Okay, you, you, you see this scenario unfolding here. So we had this pregame meeting on Friday morning where I learned that my computer didn't have a working camera. Uh, I have never even had a use for a camera on my computer. Of course, everyone on this Zoom meeting was saying, oh, Danielle, you've got a camera on your computer. Well, no, I didn't. Um, but I was supposed to be the host of this annual meeting. I needed a working camera and that was non-negotiable. So after this pregame meeting, I left my house. I went down the street to purchase an external webcam um, and I was at Staples. I then went to Target. I then went to Walmart. Everybody was sold out and I checked even on Amazon and I couldn't get a webcam for a minimum of two weeks and I had two days. Um, so I was getting pretty stressed out, quite honestly. And while I was trying to figure out how to deal with this dilemma, I got on the phone with my stepmom and I was just sharing with her how frustrated I was. And, and she said, well, so is that the little thingy that you clip to the top of your laptop? And I said, yes, it is. And she said, oh, I have one of those you can borrow. Prices averted. So um, kind of the conclusion here is all in all, we had almost 1,400 people signed up for this virtual meeting. And we ended up saving the association about $40,000 by not doing it the way we've always done it. That was our our first um, try with this moving to a virtual environment. And guess what, it worked. Not without some stress, but it did work. Uh, and it, it turned out to be a great growth year because uh, obviously all of 2021 has been something fun for Lori to do, but we'll touch on that in a little bit here. Um, Danielle, you're also very unique in that you did go through our first leadership academy and you're the first president from that, from any academy to, to get this far in our association. How did your experience as part of the first class of the leadership academy prepare you for your role at the, as the first alumni president? I, you know, I think that um, leadership academy is a great a great idea, a great thing to go through. And, and back to the question earlier about how to get involved and how to increase your leadership skills. Leadership Academy is an amazing way to do that. So um, if you haven't um, thought about that, you need to think about it. And actually, if you see in the chat, um, there we actually are taking applications right now for our next Leadership Academy uh, 2022. So. Back to your question, Scott. Um, Leadership Academy is a small group of people, maybe 20 people or so, who um, have expressed an interest in developing their leadership skills even more or, or, or developing them, period. And what I experience, it's, it's like a, I don't know, a 10 month thing, I can't remember, but um, they just bring in the great speakers, they have great activities. These, um, a lot of relationship building, and it, it forces you in many ways to step out of your comfort zone, 
you really um, learn your, your strengths as a leader. Learn your, your areas where you're not quite as strong. And that's okay to have areas you're not quite as strong because that's where other people come in. Leadership Academy is just an, a, a really good um, way to increase um, who you are as a leader, to be better, to be stronger, and but also to learn about the association, how it works. How does AR fit into who um, our association is? How does NAR work? And I think just in your everyday real estate business, you don't understand how all three of these amazing organizations work together, but by going through Leadership Academy, you get a broader sense and a better sense of, of what they are. So when you actually are in a leadership position, you can, um, you have tools that you didn't have before. You have an understanding you didn't have before. So it's a great program. Thank you, Danielle. We're gonna open this back up to the group again, lighten up the, the questions here, because we all know we work real hard at the, the art of being a realtor, and we also work real hard at, at leadership. So question would be, how do you spend your free time and what do you do to unwind? Lori, why don't you start us off this time? Well, I spend my free time just hanging out with my friends and my family and try to be outdoors, go visit new places. Um, I spend a lot of time down in Laguna Beach and San Diego and a variety of different cities and just relax. And then if I'm home, I, I like to read and listen to audiobooks and and binge watch a, a few shows. Just to kind of take a break from, from work, which is hard to do. Okay. I agree with, with Lori. Um, I, <laughs> it is hard to take a break. I don't do that well. Um, my husband and I are in the business together. So, and we work out of our home. So it is really hard to take a break from work. And I don't, I just, I struggle with that um, daily. Uh, but when I actually do something for myself um, and get away and close the office door, um, I love spending time with my husband. Um, he is my my number one in every sense of the word. Um, spend time with my family, my friends. I love to travel. I love to travel domestically and internationally. I, actually, it's funny. I looked at a map the other day. I counted it up. I've been to 56 countries. Um, and there's a whole lot of more countries that I want to visit. So I love that. I love cooking. I love trying new recipes. I love entertaining. I love having my friends over for a meal. Um, I'm really relationship oriented. I enjoy watching Hallmark movies um, when I can talk my husband into letting us do that because he doesn't enjoy them as much as I do. But my gosh, how can you not love a story? Boy meets girl, they have a bit of a struggle. They get back together in the end. I mean, love always wins. And I, I love that. So um, there, there you go. I guess a little more about me. Free time. What a, what a, what a concept. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm probably a little bit more like Danielle uh, with regards to uh, what we do. I, because Christy and I are both in this business, um, we do a pretty uh, pretty respectable amount of business. We're, we're honestly this this is really where my comfort zone is. If I'm not working, I'm a little bit uncomfortable. Um, if it wasn't for the gym, um, and there are periods of time where I just have not been uh, super committed to workouts. Um, Honestly, that's when I, I struggle the most. Uh, if I can focus and get into the gym, you know, if I can get into the gym four or five times a week, I'm, I'm going to be running at my optimum level. And uh, if it's less than that, things get a little sketchy sometimes. Um, I will tell you that the biggest change that I made was uh, a commitment that Christy and I actually made together. It's probably been about eight years, maybe. Um, we do a date night every Saturday night. So at five o'clock, PM, I shut down. Um, I had never shut down my business in my life. In fact, when I first got into real estate, one of the, my little mantras, which honestly probably earned me, I, I can't tell you how much business it earned me, but it, it was really responsible for, for my career launching was uh, I made a commitment that I would return your call within 10 minutes, no matter what. And this is back in the day when we had pagers. So you know, unfortunately, my kids uh, took a hit, you know, because when that pager went off, they had to be quiet. Things got, you know, real tense. And I, I, I made that commitment to, to, to return that client's call. And um, I kind of operated in that same vacuum for over a decade, 
you know, um, it wasn't really until um, we, we, we did this date night routine and, and at five o'clock on Saturday night, I just shut down. It does, I don't take appointments. I don't set appointments. It's completely blocked. It's not an option. And um, honestly, you really, for me, I was able to really look forward to, to my Saturday nights with Christine. And, and that's, that's, that's how I survive. <laughs> Uh, a fun fact here I want to share her too because Danielle mentioned she likes traveling. The uh, interesting part here was she'll, she knows where I'm going with this. I actually met Danielle at the auditorium at Ocar one day. I was sitting in front of her, I believe, or behind her at uh, one of the classes. And she and her husband were about to leave on a, a trip on a cruise for the first time in that forever. And she, owned, she and Jim owned their own independent brokerage. And she asked my business partner and I to help run their business while they were gone. It's like, wow. <laughs> it's, it's like immediate trust. Uh, thank you, Danielle, for that, that trust that's created a great friendship and uh, this leadership team here, I think, in some part because of it. So thank you. Um, I'll again. tell you that, just to tag on to that, that was one of, um, one of the, the greatest things is we're just sitting in this class. And, uh, you know, ever since then, Scott and, and his business partner, Lynn, have taken over our business when we go on vacation, which is every year. Um, and they are great. And that's part of what is so beautiful also about being in leadership is you meet some really amazing people. So I thank you for that. Well, thank you also. Our next question is pretty straightforward again here. What did you do to prepare for your presidency? Let's start with Adam this time, since you're going to be our most uh, recent here shortly. And then work our way backwards. Sure. Um, honestly, I would not have taken this step um, had it not been for uh, staff and and people like Dave and Debbie. Um, you know, I know that that staff has our back. And um, the first time around when I probably should have run for president and I just felt I wasn't ready was because I did not feel I could make the commitment and do the association justice um, and, and honor the commitment that it's going to take to do this. Um, I think I'm a little bit more prepared now. Um, you know, Christine is, is there behind me uh, to help fill in some of the, uh, you know, some of the, the tasks that are going to be um, still there uh, because we're still active uh, practitioners. Uh, but I, I know that I can lean on great people like Lori and like Danielle. And, um, you know, I, I've been touched by uh, other past presidents who, who've extended their well wishes. And, and, you know, they've told me, hey, we're here for you. If you have ever, ever have any questions, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. And, and that was the kind of support that I felt I needed to be able to do this. And we'll see how it goes. That'd be great. Hey, Lori, how about you? Sure. Um, yeah, so very similar to Adam, you know, just spending time at the association, you learn the inner workings. And so having been on committees for several years and having served on the board already for six years prior, um, I, I was pretty well versed in how we how we operated and where our needs were. But I spent the time listening to members and having conversations with previous pres presidents from Orange County Realtors as well as previous presidents from other associations in other areas, just to get another point of view on what were their challenges. And, um, you know, I don't spend a ton of time on social media, but I'm very, I'm fairly visible on social media due to some of the groups that I'm involved with. And so that became sort of an, an incubation space to hear what the challenges were and what people were looking for. So I would say that's, that's what I did to prepare is just really make sure I knew what people wanted and was able to tap into people to, to evaluate what's the best strategy for moving forward. In, in my previous career, I'd spent a lot of time handling transitions. So I knew my transition into the presidency was, was going to be fine. It's, so what, what did the members want? What did they need? That's what I needed to find out. That's good. Well, you've done a great job. And Adam, you will do a great job too. And I'm really glad you didn't run the year that you thought you weren't quite ready for it because that was the year I ran. So um, I might not have ever become president had you run. So thank you for that. Um, so as I mentioned early on, you, you are elected 
president-elect and then you ascend a president here at um, Orange County Realtors. So when I was elected president-elect, I took that job really seriously. And I made a commitment that day to be as prepared as I possibly could once I stepped into the shoes of the president. And like Lori, I talked with a lot of past presidents, everyone I could, I could get my hands on who would talk to me. Um, I read a lot of leadership books and I don't even like to read. So that was actually a big move for me. And I, and I read a lot of them, but I figured I had to just, you know, get information from any possible source I, I could. And, and there are some really good leadership books out there. I asked a ton of questions. I spent a lot of time with staff learning about Orange County Realtors and how things work behind the scenes. Um, the other thing I did a lot of was I attended as many committee meetings as I could. When you're president elect, you um, are, anybody can, can go to committees as a guest, but when you're president elect, you, you actually can go to all of them. Um, and I went to so many of them, I couldn't believe it. Um, I, my husband's like, you're going to another committee meeting. I didn't know you were on the, no, I'm not on the committee, but I'm, tr I'm trying, I was trying to go so that I could understand what each committee was doing and where their focus was, how I might be able to help them support them. And, you know, but, but really if I were to just sit back and say, what was the one thing that I did to prepare me to become president? It was that I spent a lot of time listening to other people and learning from them. And I think that that was probably the best thing I could have done. And, and I did it. I, I listened. It's a lot for me to take in, obviously, coming into this as my president elect year. So thank you for those words of wisdom. Uh, next question I want to ask is how does OC Realtor size as the largest association in California impact the real estate industry? Why don't we go backwards this time and start with Danielle? Sure. So we're we're really lucky. I mean, we are, as Scott said, the largest local association in California. We are also the number 11 in the nation. So Orange County Realtors is looked at um, by the other associations. We are really good at what we do and other associations admire that. Um, because of our size, we can do some things that others don't have the ability to do too. We can bring in popular speakers. We can send our leaders to trainings and conferences to become better. Um, we have the talent in our staff to produce things like our magazine, which is known and revered nationwide. It's, it's an amazing magazine as, as, as we all know. Um, we offer, we get to offer classes that smaller associations don't have the resources nor the talent to offer. Our members are better realtors and affiliates because of the support that our association can offer them. And in turn, that impacts the real estate industry in a, in a really positive way. I'll add to that, you know, because of the size of our association and, and that, that position in our county, we have a wide range of agent experience. And we, had a, we have a broad level of um, a variety of transactions. And so we're this, you know, ecosystem within our own county that that's in part why some of these other local associations will look to us because we've experienced it. We have agents who have experienced so many different types of transactions and different types of issues that maybe in other areas they don't they just don't have as many people and as many transactions as we do so i think that adds tremendously to our value as an association because we're this giant brain trust of people and experiences that really make a difference no that's a great great question scott i got the opportunity to to really experience what, I guess, to use lack of a better term, the size of this organization, um, what that really does. Um, as a first time director for National Association of Realtors and being able to go to my first live meetings uh, a couple of weeks ago in San Diego, um, you know, it, it, this association is very well respected from the top down, I mean, from, from Dave and, and our staff all the way to 
so many of the, of the great agents and affiliates who are part of the various committees at both state and national levels. Um, when we come to California Association of Realtor meetings, um, you know, we're like an army, right? I, I think uh, Lori and, and Danielle can back me up on this and, and Scott as well. I mean, you know, we have a very good representation. Having that size gives us uh, a, a number of seats on the board uh, at a, both the state and national level. And um, people look at our association as the model and try to emulate what we do. It's, it was amazing. Honestly, I was very, very proud being uh, able to participate in my first live national level um, meetings uh, in San Diego. It, it was an honor uh, to be a part of representing us. And, and uh, believe me, people really do value what we do. We're, we're definitely, we're, we're trailblazers over here. Thank you, all of you. I'm going to kind of focus in again on some uh, specific questions for, for certain people here. So, uh, Danielle, I wanted to ask you a question here. What were some of the biggest challenges you faced as a president last year? <laughs> <laughs> Besides wow. the COVID-19. Well, or in conjunction with it. Yeah, that um <laughs> I only have to laugh because every single thing that I thought was going to happen my year as president um didn't. And um, and that's okay though. Looking back on it, it's okay. But you know. Everything was brand new. There was no precedent. Uh, we had to, everyone had to figure out how to, um, to do all of the association work with COVID hanging over our heads, with virtual hanging over our heads. Um, I, I think that the biggest challenge though, quite honestly, and it, and it has to do with COVID, but was the, the, the communication end of things, you know, we all know that 80% of communication is nonverbal. So we, we, we lost that ability to observe the nonverbal with COVID and having to move to this virtual environment. The, we lost the, um, the fidgeting, the crossing of their legs or their arms. We, we lost the ability to know if someone was paying attention or not. Um, we, I remember several times I would, would be, um, I guess what we would call a speaker, you know, I was a speaker at an event or I was hosting an event and yet it was online. And some people liked that. I didn't, I needed to get that feedback from the audience. Did they, were they understanding what I was saying? Um, if I said something that <laughs> should have been funny, but nobody was laughing, um, I didn't get that feedback. And then and all of a sudden you lose your confidence too. And so, so that whole ability to communicate effectively um, was probably the biggest challenge in, in not getting that feedback um, for, for me as president. Thank you. So Lori, kind of taking on that. Were there any advantages to leading during the pandemic this year? Or let's turn around and maybe even disadvantages? Sure. So, you know, there, there were some obvious advantages in the fact that we didn't have to travel as much and we had a broader reach using Zoom and other platforms. We were able to reach a broader audience. And so, you know, as far as some of the biggest challenges I faced during my presidency this year was knowing at the end of 2021, uh, 2020, that going into 2021, we were going to be faced with the transition. So last year, it was all about pivoting from, you know, the normal world to the COVID world. And it was going, it was evident that during 2021, we were going to have to create a transition. My personality is such that, you know, I just simply deal with the cards I'm dealt. And so I don't look at things as I'm more disadvantaged than another situation. This is what I was dealt. And what I was dealt was the opportunity to lead the organization through the transition. And one thing that you know, I recognized early on was as a business owner and as president of the association, we had a lot of difficult decisions to make in our business lives. And understanding that at the end of the day, everyone had the same goal, but we were all 
using different words. And we all had different point of views, but at the end of the day, we really all just wanted to be able to get back to normalcy and conduct our business. And so balancing the different point of views and making sure everyone felt heard and respected for their point of views was really important to me. And so I don't necessarily consider that a challenge or a disadvantage, but it was certainly something that I had to be mindful of at every meeting and every email I got, even if they were you know, upset over decisions that we made, um, we had to make collectively as a group, pre the president does not make decisions in a vacuum, it's a group effort. And we had some lengthy, yet very productive conversations about how to move forward in 2021. So I'm really proud of that. Um, you know, I, I don't really think there were any true disadvantages of, other than us just missing each other in real life. But there came a point where we could go out in the world. And so I had coffee dates and lunches with people and was able to recapture some of that. And when we finally had our first group meeting, our first board of directors meeting, it was literally what, three weeks ago was the first meeting we've had in person since January of 2020. And it was just amazing to be with everybody. So, and in fact, Scott said to me at lunch, he said, everyone notice how happy you were. I was really energized by just being with the group finally. So it was, it was a really good um, ending of the year, if you'll say. As I mentioned then, it was our first meeting together of the year and it was literally our last meeting of the year. So it was a, it was, it was, it was a good year in my book. It was a good year. And it was really a good year. I'm gonna stick with you, Laura, here. What expectations did you have for your presence and how did it differ and what surprised you? It's kind of along the same lines, but if there's anything different there. Yeah, so, you know, um, it's a really interesting question because I've, over the last year, I've had many people from our association and outside of our association ask me some sort of variation of that question. How, how did it turn out? What did you expect? How was it different than what you expected? And you know, it might sound strange at first when I explain this, but I had no specific expectations going into this job because I had been part of this association for so long, I already knew what to expect. And it's my belief as the leader of the organization, you're there to serve the people. You're there to do what they want. So it wasn't about what I wanted or what I expected. I expected in 2021, we'd go through the transition. When I ran for president elect in 2019, I didn't, we didn't know about the pandemic. So that was not an expectation on the radar. But even when I did my campaign speech at the board of directors meeting, I had soul searched and tried to really figure out why. Why was I running for president? And I, I mentioned previously, many of my friends had come up, come up to me and said, it's time for you to run for president. You should be doing this. And I really wanted to have a sound reason of why I wanted to do it or why I needed to do it. And, and those of you that were in that meeting will probably remember, I very honestly said, I cannot give you a reason why. For some reason in my gut, I just knew it was what I should be doing. And I literally said, the reason will reveal itself. And sure enough, it did. And so I don't, I don't feel that the year was any better or any worse than what I expected because I went in with the expectation of we've got a lot of work to do. We had a lot of Besides the COVID transition, we had a lot of other work that needed to be done this year that just happens every few years and it happened to be that year. So I knew we had all of that work that still needed to get done um, and we did it. And I feel that we did it very productively and very professionally. And I mean, really, I think we were more productive than we've been in a while by being able to do some of these meetings, all of these meetings on Zoom. That's my answer. Thank you, Lord. And Danielle, then, what lessons did you learn from your year as president? Uh, you know, I think I think maybe it all boils down to flexibility. Um, we don't have to do things the way we've always done them. 
And if we're flexible, we can do things, um, you know, in a, in a different way, like technology. We, um, you know, we can run these meetings on Zoom. We can be two places at once, or at least if there's two meetings that, that butt up to each other, we can actually go to both of them. Um, so, you know, just because we've always run a meeting the way that we have, we don't need to do that anymore and we can come out better for it. So for, for me, I think the biggest lesson, lesson is just flexibility. Thank you. And th on, this is for both of you also. What does your future in leadership look like now? Well, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll go first. So I've been very involved in a variety of organizations for the last several years. So I'm going to continue those involvements. Um, I'm also part of several groups that were started during the pandemic, and I'm very active in those groups as well. And so for me, there's no change. Um, I just keep on doing what I always do. Um, as far as at Orange County Realtors, I will have one more year left on um, the board where I where I get to serve as a director for another year, and I'll be the immediate past president, and I'll remain on my favorite committees, which risk management is my favorite committee, uh, but I'm also very involved at CAR and NAR, and so I'm chairing a committee at CAR next year, and, um, you know, look forward to just getting involved in other additional opportunities. So I'll keep on doing what I keep doing. How about you, Danielle? So my, mine is a little different than Lori's. Um, I, you know, when you are on exec, uh, president, immediate past president, um, well, not quite actually, sorry. Um, but when you're president, immediate past president and president elect, you uh, automatically get a seat on CAR and NAR as, as they're on their board of directors. Um, I found over the last four years that I've been in these positions that um, that wasn't my passion to be on CAR's board of director or NAR. And as a result, I actually gave up my seat this year in, in 2021, um, feeling like I didn't just because it was an automatic uh, position, I, I just didn't feel like I was going to um, do the position right. And there were other people who would do it better than me. And so I, I have slowly been stepping away from, from the involvement with CAR and NAR. Um, however, my passion is still Orange County Realtors. I love being part of Orange County Realtors. Unfortunately, this is my last year as a director, um, which I'm very sad about. Um, I've really enjoyed my time. Um, but all things, you know, good things do come to an end as well. But like Lori said, I will still be serving on my favorite committees as a committee member. Um, although the, the committees have not, the committee members haven't been, um, chosen yet or, or made public. I, I did apply for three of my favorites, bylaws, credentials, and finance. So I'm hoping that the, uh, chairs see me as a good committee member and, and will, um, give me a spot on those committees, but I, I, I want to stay involved. Um, so wherever anyone needs me, I'm there. I've told Adam um, as the incoming president, I'm here for him. And in any way I can help out, I've got a ton of knowledge that I've gotten uh, gained over these last several years. Scott is president elect. I want to be there for, for him too. Um, Lori doesn't really need me, but of course I would, I would certainly be there for you as well. Yeah. But um, I, I love Orange County Realtors. I want to stay involved um, in any possible way that anybody wants me involved or sees that, that I might be able to be an asset. So I'm, I'm hoping that, that will be the case as time goes on. And then I'm going to ask one, one last question of the two of you. Um, that was, what were your short and long-term goals? I know, Danielle, you said that obviously a lot of them were kiboshed by the COVID, what were they? And maybe if you could share those briefly. Start with Danielle. Okay, so I, I, am, a, I am not a goal setter. Um, I, <laughs> I put so much pressure on myself that I don't need goals because if I were to fail at a goal, I would, I would um, 
this would not be a good thing. I, I would not do well at that. So I learned a long time ago that I just can't set goals. Um, I will try too hard to my own detriment to make sure that those goals get accomplished. Um, but what I do have is expectations. And um, coming into my, my leadership as president, I'd had a lot of expectations of myself. Um, I wanted to be approachable. I wanted to make sure that people felt that they were heard um, by me. And then after I heard their position, determine how I could be a best, best service um, for them and how could I um, you know, really just be the best that I could be in this position. So I would say that that's, that's more it. It's not, I know Scott, I'm not answering your question, but really the short answer is I did not have any goal. Um, okay. It just doesn't work for me and my personality. Thank you. And, and Lori, same question. What were your short and long-term goals? Yeah, my response is similar because I didn't really approach them as goals. I just wanted to make sure that everyone felt like they belonged. You know, we pay our dues and so we pay the board is the mentality of a lot of our members. And I wanted people to really feel like they belonged. And so um, the CEO and I discussed at length different new ways that we could help people feel more connected to the association. And so staff has done a tremendous job in launching some new um, recognition opportunities, just small little reach outs that really go a long way. You know, you get a card in the mail and it's from the office and, and signed by the president. Like, that's really special. That's really cool. Um, so I really just wanted to make sure that we could make people feel that they belonged. And I knew that we would be working on our strategic plan for the next three years. And so I wanted to make sure that we were very thoughtful with the way we approached it, we have a really solid foundation, but how can we implement diversity, equity, and inclusion into everything we do? Now, Adam will be launching a, a program that will start next year, um, committee or program, I'm not sure exactly how it's being packaged, but we did a lot this year to try to bring education and awareness, and that included within our strategic plan to make sure that we looked at things through that DEI lens. Um, and lastly, really, I just wanted to make sure that we continue to refine our systems and improve our systems. And as was mentioned earlier, you know, with, with the pandemic, we looked at doing things differently. And quite frankly, you know, as, a, as an organization and as an industry, we could be advanced in so many ways and yet so far behind in other ways. And so this really kind of bridged the gap on all of that. So I'm really thrilled that what we accomplished in 2021 is gonna just set us up even stronger for the future. And of course, over time, those systems will continue to be refined and improved. It's about continuous improvement. You know, in leadership, if you think that the goal is accomplished at the end of the term, that's not realistic. It's always about continuous improvement. Um, so I didn't label them as goals either, Danielle. You know, it was just more of um, some strategies that I was hoping that we could um, implement and um, some opportunities that we could we could execute, and we did. Thank you. And for everyone who thought that I was forgetting about Adam, that was a nice little segue to the question. I, next question I have for Adam. So Adam, what are your goals for 2022 as president? You know, that's a question that actually has been asked uh, quite often by quite a few folks um, once uh, this president-elect process began. And, you know, I can't speak for all of the president's past, but I think for, for a good amount of us, um, I don't have an agenda. Um, the truth is, is this, this is an opportunity for me to give back. So the first goal that I have is, is an opportunity to give back. This profession has been incredible from where I came from 23 years ago to where I stand today. Um, it's, it's night and day. And so all I can really do at this point is just show my gratitude by being willing to give back. Now, are there a few things that I would like to see happen during my term? Absolutely. Lori actually touched on one of the three pillars. Um, I think that uh, diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion is a concept. For me, it's really, really 
be hard to grasp because I don't see myself as having biases and things like this. But as I get introduced to some of the educational programs that this association has been offering, I find myself saying, hey, yeah, actually, that kind of resonates with me. And um, I think that we, we should do everything that we can to continue to support uh, everything that Depo Lori and, and Lisa Dunn have done and, and just uh, um, this concept and the content needs to continue to be made available to our members. Um, I also really want to make sure that the Leadership Academy knows that they have my total support. You know, um, this is a difficult undertaking to continue to, to both have uh, relative con uh, content. Um, you know, it takes commitment by individuals to want to be a part of something like the Academy. But if we stand back and we look at what that Academy and Rita is, is kind of the, the, you know, the, the person who brought this thing forward, you stand back and you look at where we are right now. And our Leadership Academy has been incredibly successful. And I'm here to do whatever I can to try to help support that and anybody that's involved. I know we've got some great people involved going into 2022 to try to help keep this program moving forward. Now, of course, um, my little personal project, uh, RAW, the really, uh, Realtor and Affiliate Wellness Group, you know, this is, uh, we're just completing our third year with RAW. Um, we're, we're starting to, 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 to get some attention. Um, I will be presenting uh, RAW to the Board of Directors uh, at Pasadena tomorrow afternoon in person. Um, and, and uh, you know, this is just something that I hope that we can grow this concept to make sure that, um, not just our association, but any association throughout the state and the country. If they, they want to know what we did here at Orange County Realtors, I, you know, I, I would like to make sure that we continue to give this away for free, right? I mean, I don't mean monetarily, I just think as a gesture of goodness to, to looking after our own members, it's a, it's a great member benefit that we can to be able to be able to support each other. So that's, you know, those are kind of the three pillars that I would say uh, I'm here for, but uh, I'm not here to reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, I wasn't around in the age when we were pushing squares up the mountain. You know, whoever it was that invented that first wheel, <laughs> you know, they did a great job. And I don't think it gets much better than that. I think this association and our staff uh, have, have things dialed in pretty well. So I don't want to get in their way. That is a, truly a great answer, Adam. Thank you so much because you've been very consistent in your answer there. And I feel very much the same way. I'm very proud to be following in your footsteps. But I'm going back to when I called you over the phone to talk to you about my running for president-elect here also, and I asked you a similar question. And it was pretty much exactly the same. Yeah, you know, when we've got a really good thing going like we've had the last several years, and you're, you're wanting to maintain that and just get back, it, it inspired me to uh, continue pushing for my, my campaign also. So thank you. Good. Um, Bill. I'm going to ask you one, one other question here, Adam. This is um, just for Adam. What impact, if any, do you think the pandemic will have on your year as president? You know, this is the great experiment. Um, you know, we've had an opportunity to do some trial uh, experimentation, some trial runs with our marketing meetings. And as we start to really figure out how much of this can day virtual and how much of this needs to come back to a live setting, I think is ultimately still to be um, uncovered during my term. I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to be resolved by the end of 2022, but I think we'll have a lot more information to go up, to go off of, to see how we can merge two great ways of, of conducting our business. Um, you know, I, I just want to just kind of go back to where we were a year ago. Um, I don't know if, if uh, Danielle and Lori can, can agree with me on this, but you know, when we first went to the Zoom format, and this pivot happened pretty quickly. I mean, I remember Danielle, when we had uh, our annual membership for 19 set up and uh, I'm sorry, for 20 set up and, and literally within two weeks we were doing a Zoom meeting, right? And uh, it was huge. I mean, uh, the turnout was fantastic. Um, I, I found myself getting hit with a lot of uh, requests to attend a lot of different meetings. And what ended up happening is, is an already busy schedule got busier. When Zoom came in to, to Vogue, it was starting to get, I see both late, both you late. <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden my calendar, which was already full, got fuller. I don't know how that was possible. So what I really had to come back and look at was, 
you know, all of the time that I was sitting in cars going to client meetings and, and whatnot became filled with more meetings. And then this thing called Zoom fatigue. And I just didn't know how to handle the fatigue that happened. And um, I feel like there has been some balance now. I've been able to set some boundaries on what I can and can't do during the course of a day, how many meetings, how much time I can spend on the computer. But I, I do know that we're here to stay in this virtual environment as well. And so the great experiment for 2022 is to see how we blend the two, how we can bring our technology forward uh, at Orange County Realtors and, and, and make this thing uh, a win-win because I'm sure there's a lot of people, including myself, that found I could get a lot more done when I'm not sitting in transportation, sitting in, in, a, in a traffic jam. But at the, at the same time, I don't want to burn myself out because I'm doing too much. And uh, so we'll see where it goes. I mean, you know, that's the great experiment in 2022. Thank you, Adam. We've got a, a couple more questions we want to ask for the whole group here. And this one is, is kind of unique. It, it came to us and I kind of scratched my head, but I, I think, Lori, you probably know more on, on this subject than the rest of us. So maybe you can give us a little background here. It says, many leaders in, in, uh, experience the imposter syndrome. Did you experience it? And if so, how did you overcome it? Yeah, so when, when this question came up during our call last week, uh, I could hear everybody kind of scratching their head. Um, this is something I'm very familiar with, uh, simply because I've been in a variety of, of leadership roles and have taken so many leadership courses. Um, the imposter syndrome is when you feel like a fraud or where you feel you haven't earned what you've actually accomplished. And it's something that was identified by psychologists in the late 70s and I knew I suffered from it during the 90s and the early part of the 2000s in my career. I just didn't know it had a name. And it was something where I was working really hard. I knew I was killing it. Yet at the end of the day, I would feel sometimes like, gosh, these people think I'm, I'm really good. And maybe I'm not. Maybe, maybe I'm not as good as they think I am. And I remember speaking with a couple of male bosses of mine and, and sharing this with them. And they just said, you know, well, you're crazy, which number one, do not tell a woman she's crazy. Uh, that gets you nowhere, trust me. Uh, they didn't understand it because it's, it's more common with women. It doesn't mean men don't suffer from it, but it's more common with women. And so we just have this, this feeling of, um, of doubt, like we haven't earned what we've accomplished. And so, yes, I did suffer from it um, in my 20s and into my 30s. And I have a 27-year-old daughter now who is a decade more advanced with her confidence and her um, acceptance of everything she's earned. She learned that a whole decade younger than I did. And so she's off to a wonderful start in her career. I wish I had identified this and understood it so much earlier. Having said that though, um, you know, it's, it is something that you can overcome and really awareness is part of it is you have to recognize that if you work hard and if you have a natural inclination to challenge yourself and to accomplish things, don't doubt yourself. And when you do doubt yourself, you know, have your daily affirmations handy if you need it. I mean, I still wake up with, with all, the, all of the responsibilities I've had in my career. I, I know I've accomplished a lot, but there are days I wake up and I say, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Am I, am I living my full potential right now? I don't know. You know, I know I'm doing an amazing job in all of the um, work that I do, but am I living my full potential? And that's when I realized, okay, that syndrome starting to creep in. You gotta, you gotta put it at bay. So you can, can overcome it and have a really good group of friends. Um, I had, I had one, um, mentor who mentioned the dirty dozen that's having 12 people in your, in your sphere that you can rely on for different reasons. And so, you know, it's just a clever name, the dirty dozen, but you can reach out to those people when you need that pep talk. So, um, so that's what it is. And, and yeah, I, I did suffer from it. I've overcome it, I think, finally. How about Danielle or Adam? 
Go ahead, Danielle. Okay. Um, so the imposter um, syndrome, I, I, um, yeah, I mean, I've definitely felt it. I think as leaders, you know, we need to be strong and confident, but that doesn't mean that we're always self-assured. And um, I did have a lot of self-doubt and feelings of incompetence going into my presidential year and, and especially during it, despite my education and experience and accomplishments, um, I, I definitely had that. I still have it today going into this, this panel discussion. I, I, you know, just because I happen to have the title of uh, immediate past president, am I even really, is this, do you guys really want to hear from me? Um, I, I'll tell you what, I, I am as down to earth as they come. I do not have any errors about me at all. Um, but um, I guess just to, to overcome some of these feelings of self, self-doubt to, to get on a, a panel like this, I mean, I, I work hard. I hold myself to really high standards and sometimes that's good and sometimes that's not so good. I think to, to deal with it though, you know, I have to go back to my husband. I have a solid relationship with my husband. I have a solid marriage. I have a strong faith. Um, for me, that works. Um, my husband's really supportive. He's really good at helping me understand when I'm being too hard on myself. And, you know, I also have to give credit to the Orange County Realtor staff. They are so good at encouraging me, and helping me and, and um, working through some of the self-doubt. Um, <laughs> I have, can't tell you how many times I've gotten a, a text or an email from someone on staff who says, hey, you're, you're doing good right in the middle of this meeting where I feel like I'm just flubbing up all over the place. I, you lose your place on where you are in a meeting, um, dealing with Zoom, again, not being able to read the crowd. And the, the staff at OCAR is so good at just sending that little bit of encouragement to say, hey, you're, you're good. So for me, dealing with an imposter syndrome or or feelings of inadequacy. Um, for me, it's just that I have such a great support system that I was able to work through some of some of these feelings of inadequacy. Thank you. Thanks, Danielle. Um, no doubt. Um, I think some people read me completely wrong. And there are people who probably think I'm confident and assured. And I don't think there's anybody on this call that it probably is shyer uh, in, at heart. I mean, this, this is definitely something that is, is um, intimidating. Uh, the process, speaking, public speaking, saying a few words uh, at the installation. This is all stuff that, uh, um, honestly, I'm not comfortable with. Um, I also realize I'm not perfect. I'm far from perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. Um, I just have to get more comfortable accepting the fact that I am going to make those mistakes because I do try to hold myself to the highest standard possible. I, you know, uh, I, I, I want to do right. I want to do well, but there are just those that are going to be much more gifted, both orators and, and, you know, are going to be able to, to run a meeting better than I can. Um, but, you know, Danielle, you kind of hit it on the head and Lori's touched on it too. I mean, we have a great staff. Um, we've got great people. Um, you know, this is a one-year commitment. This isn't a, a life term here. I, I get to do the best I can to try to carry a torch forward. Uh, I'm going to pass that torch to Scott. Scott's going to pass that torch to somebody else. This association is going to be here, you know, long after we're done, uh, you know, in this business. And all we can really do is do our best. And if I can kind of keep it at that level, um, I'm going to be okay. And, uh, so, you know, I'm looking forward to it, but I, I definitely would not have done this without support of, of especially getting to know Danielle and Lori so much better in this last year to, to two years. Um, you guys make it look good. <laughs> so I, I just, I'm grateful that you're here behind me and uh, I'm glad that Scott's gonna walk next to me as we go forward. Great answers, thanks everyone. We are in the home stretch here, by the way. Um, 
There's a couple more questions that I want to ask. This one was actually asked by someone in the uh, the chat. A variation on this: What changes did you make in your personal professional life to become a leader? And then we'll lead into the second half after this. So let's. Uh, why don't we start with Lori this time? Well, I think as I've I've sort of hinted at along the way, it's just really part of who I am. So the changes that I've made in my personal and professional life throughout my entire career, are really just having boundaries. Um, you know, I mentioned at the top of the hour, like, well, sometimes it's hard to detach from work. When I'm detached, I'm completely detached. And I am not opposed to taking a three hour break in the middle of the day to do other things. And then I'll work late into the night. So I've always been really good at setting those boundaries and, and making sure people know what they can expect from me. So although I don't have the 10 minute return the phone call rule like Adam does, I admire people that can do that. I may have, you know, an hour or two, people just know I will get to them. I won't forget about them. I will contact them and follow up. Um, they know I'm working on something that's a priority at that time, but that's just sort of the expectation I set with people. Um, as far as to handle the presidential year, um, I definitely relied on my business partner, Lisa Dunn. She was able to handle a lot of things that normally I would have handled throughout the year um, because she's she's a great partner, she's a great realtor, and um, you know she's she has that that leadership uh, capacity and skill set and mindset as well. So that's probably the main thing that I changed for the presidential year is just making sure that my business was covered. Um, as far as, you know, personal life changes, I had a lot of personal life changes in the last couple of years. So it was just sort of par for the course. Uh, so that's really, that's really it. And before we, we move to the next person here, I just was looking at, as you mentioned, Lisa covering a lot of business for you. I'm just looking at each one of us here. Each one of us has an integral business partner that we have to rely on, whether it's a spouse or actual business partner. So Teaming up with someone does obviously make life a lot better all the way around. So, Danielle, how about you? Yeah, um, Lori mentioned the word priorities. And um, my dad, who's my hero, he always said that you make time for that which you want to make time for. So, you know, your, your question, Scott, what changes did you need to make in your personal or professional life to become a leader? I really didn't make any changes, but I did pay attention to my priorities. And I love, I love there's this great metaphor for task prioritization, and it's the rubber balls versus the glass balls. Rubber balls bounce, glass balls batter. So if you drop a rubber ball, you can usually recover easily enough. But if you drop a glass ball, you got a real problem on your hands. So um, relating this to my year as president, as you would imagine, I had to do a lot of juggling and prioritizing during my presidency, as, as all of us um, did or will. And um, one example is, is that my dad, he was very sick um, from the beginning of my presidency and, and ultimately passed away. Um, my dad and that family situation was my glass ball because there were many days when I had to put that presidency on the back burner to be there with and for my family. Um, <laughs> but most of the time I was all in, I was available, I was aware, I was working really hard to make sure that I led with integrity and inspiration and grace. So, so that, that was me, that was, it was what, what is a rubber ball and what's a glass ball? What, what has to be priority? And what's going to shatter if I drop it? And Scott, you, you know, you you said it so well. Is you know being able to rely on a few other key people to help with the business, to help with the personal life. Um, we don't we don't do this year as president by ourselves. It takes a village, and to know that other people are there, um, rooting you on and taking on things that maybe. Um, we would have otherwise taken on ourselves, but just plain old, there's 24 hours in a day, not a minute more. And um, sometimes you've got to figure out what, um, what's going to what's gonna work, what isn't, what 
what can't be dropped because it will shatter and what what could drop because it will bounce back and you'll be able to figure out how to how to deal with it because it didn't break when it was dropped. That's beautiful. Thank you, Daniel. You know, uh, delegating an authority and, and uh, time management are absolutely my weakest links. So, you know, I admire both Lori and Danielle. Uh, you know, when Lori can take time and cut carve time out because she deserves that time, um, that's just awesome. Um, I'm kind of wired differently. Uh, I live off of a calendar. Um, I pretty much know where I'm going to be for the next year. I, I try to I try to put a calendar together uh, with every commitment that I, I'm making as far in advance as I can. Um, the of not working from Saturday from 5 p.m. is a hard and fast one that's in my calendar. So that one you know, is repetitively until I retire from this business, whenever that happens. I mean, I, I just want to make sure that um, I can keep some sense of, of boundary here in this process, but I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm not well suited to carving time out in the middle of the day. If there's something that needs to be done, it gets done. And for Christine and I, we both have different tasks. Um, you know, Danielle, I'm not quite sure how uh, yours and Jim's teamwork works, but, you know, Christine and I have specific tasks and functions within um, the team role. And it's going to be interesting this year because there, there's no doubt she's going to have to do some crossover. She already does too much as it is uh, in her role. And I'm going to need her to step up and take over some of the stuff that I do. Um, and, you know, um, we just do the best that we can, but uh, yeah. Um, you know, who moved my cheese, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I need to work on that part of this business. So I'll, I'll do everything that I'm supposed to do as president and still try to keep all the other balls going too. <laughs> You'll do great. And as, you know, as far as, as our different styles on managing our schedules, um, you know, I live, by, I live and breathe by my calendar too. I just, I'm able to carve out some time. And when I can, when I can see that there's some specific space available, I take full advantage of that. And I try to honor that, you know, so including with my calendar system, I schedule me time. I just, it's an appointment. Sometimes, you know, it's an appointment with myself because I got to go do my nails. I, I need to go visit friends. I want to go visit my family. So um, that doesn't mean I'm not up all night because believe me, you, you guys, I, I spare you sending the emails at uh, midnight. I schedule them to go out the next morning um, because that's where I can pick up the slack. And for me, it's, it's less of time management and it's more of energy management. I need to work when I'm at my best. And if I've already been in meetings for four or five hours, I'm not at my best anymore. I need a break and then I'll get back to it. So um, different styles, we both, we manage um, what works best for us. Well, I'm gonna copy you, Lori. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna start actually booking my gym time instead of trying to figure out where that's gonna fit in. I'm just gonna put it in there and yeah, yeah, that'll, that'll help. Yeah. This to be your first appointment on the calendar is your meantime. Yeah, but I'm not uh, I'm not Bob Wolf, man. I, I can't get up at <laughs> six in the morning, and get, get my tennis on, you know, before, before light. Yeah. Well, and we're going to kind of tag on this with one last question as our time is winding down here. Ba kind of along the lines of that last question, how was serving in leadership, how has it helped or hurt your, your personal or professional life? You know, let me, I'll just jump in on this one. Um, there's no doubt that it's helped. Uh, um, I get asked, you know, why do you do it? What do you get out of it? Um, uh, I'm not going to be... I don't know that I can monetize it. That's not really what it's about. But I tell you what, people do respect people that are active and involved and informed and educated. That's all I can tell you. And, uh, you know, from the day that I got into this business, you know, Christine wouldn't let me out of the house without a suit and tie. Things are changing now post COVID. I, I've actually started running without the tie a little bit. And, and I think that may be a fashion forward statement going forward in our industry. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> You're looking good, Scott. But um, you know, be this is this has definitely been an asset to my business. There's just no doubt. There's no doubt. You know, I don't know where my business would be without it, but I can tell you that my business is is the beneficiary of everything that I've been involved with and 
anybody that's on the call today that isn't a part of these committees and the association in one capacity or another, I, I strongly urge you to take that first step. Anyone else have a comment on that? Uh, has it helped to hurt your business, personal life? Yeah, I do. Um, it has absolutely helped both my personal and my professional life. Um, my husband and I have a client who taught us many years ago to surround ourselves with people who are better than we are. Um, not only will that make us more educated, since we'll learn from them, but we'll be challenged to be better, to be better realtors, to be better resources, to be better people. And serving leadership has helped me meet people I never would have met. And I have truly met the most amazing people while serving our association and many who have become good friends. Um, I can tell you just recently, last week, my Thanksgiving a uh, dinner table was um, included people who I've met because of being in leadership at Orange County Realtors. Um, so I, 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 these are friendships that I've made that will last a lifetime far beyond um, my involvement with Orange County Realtors or involvement in leadership. So it's absolutely helped. I love it. And I'll say to that too, that for me, it has also been really about the relationships. This is my profession. This is my career. And so everything I do, I'm going to immerse myself in it and be involved. And so every opportunity I had was because I got involved and every relationship that I have, all of, all of my chosen family members are my friends from this business. And I have, I've, I've really been the benefactor of some amazing opportunities and relationships because I put myself out there and I, I want to be part of something and I want to contribute to something and I want to be engaged in something. And because of that, I've been wonderfully rewarded both personally and professionally. It's very fulfilling. I don't, I can't imagine my career any differently uh, where I wouldn't be involved in organized leadership. I am so glad I saved that question for the last one because these were great answers, very uplifting. Um, I'm going to come out of this feeling much much better about the upcoming year and or year or two, actually, because um, to your point, Danielle, surrounding yourself with people who are, are great or better than you, whatever you want to call it, I am surrounded with people that are better than me that I'm going to be spending time learning from. And I, I hope that I can live up to that standard in 2023. Um, but I'm going to be uh, following some big shoes to fill with all three of you. I appreciate and love you all. And uh, I hope that we are just all a group of people who are going to perpetuate leaders for the future of this association that will have the, the benefit of working with the great staff that we do have here. So thank you for the time you've taken to each, each and every one of you, all of our uh, spectators or our audience out there who sat through the whole almost hour and a half of this, thank you. Uh, we look forward to doing this probably on a quarterly basis. So please come back next quarter when we sit down to, uh, to talk to everyone about a whole new topic. So thank you, everyone. And have a great afternoon as we sign off. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay.